A Chinese spacecraft carrying three people has docked successfully with the country's new space station. They blasted off about six hours earlier to take part in a three-month mission to set up experiments and to prepare for a series of spacewalks. The latest mission is considered a significant step forward in establishing Beijing as a major player in outer space. Another success for China's space program. The Shenzhou 12 rocket blasts off to dock with the country's new space station. Five, for the next three months, the crew of three will live in a module slightly larger than a city bus, carrying out experiments, going on spacewalks, and preparing the station for completion next year. China's space agency will be monitoring the astronauts to see how they handle the time away from Earth. The three-month mission is a long-term, human-crewed space flight, which requires astronauts to stay in a relatively narrow and confined environment. It takes time to adapt to the weightlessness. They will also have to cope with an environment filled with noise and vibration. It will be uncomfortable, and these effects will have a cumulative impact over time. China's space program is mostly homegrown. The United States Congress forbade NASA from cooperating with China 10 years ago. It cited concerns over the Chinese space program's secretive nature and its connections to the military. The International Space Station, launched in 1998, has hosted astronauts from over a dozen different nations. But for China, it's off limits. Beijing's response? We'll build one ourselves. While the ISS reaches the end of its lifespan, China plans to complete its station by next year. And when it does, it will be in a position to decide who can come aboard. At this stage in construction, we're not yet considering foreign astronaut participation. But foreign astronauts are certainly going to enter the Chinese space station one day. There are a number of countries that have expressed a desire to do that, and we will be open to it in the future. While there's still work to be done on the space station, China is already looking ahead to its next project, a proposed lunar base that it's planning together with Russia. And back here on Earth Now, I'm joined by Keith Cowing. He's a former NASA employee, now editor of the website nasawatch.com. He joins me from Washington, D.C. Keith, it's good to see you again. Um, how significant of an achievement is this for China's space program? Well, up until now, only two nations, uh, the U.S. and Russia, have really built large space stations in orbit. And uh, now that China has joined the club, that is a singular accomplishment. So um, it, it's a big deal. And the interesting thing about this is that the International Space Station has been up there for 20 years. I helped design it in the 1990s. So although it's state of the art, a lot of it's based on technology that's been around for a while, whereas China's space station benefited from, from – from some of that experience, but also it was designed and built in the 21st century. So mm -hmm. it's got some capabilities that may allow it, as was mentioned in the earlier piece, to uh, continue operating after the International Space Station has been retired. And is that what is going to happen? I don't think so. I actually think that the International Space Station will be extended. Uh, there's some uh, plans now to actually attach something to the International Space Station and then eventually detach it so you'd have two of them. But I think down the road, you're going to see that there's going to be a lot more collaboration and cooperation than competition. Yeah, when you say collaboration and cooperation, it sounds like you're saying there's not going to be more of this 21st century space race that is often talked about. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, the International Space Station has been in operation for 20 years. The United States, Russia, Europe, Japan, and some other countries have been working splendidly up there peacefully. And while, as you know, if you watch television, uh, our president and Russia's president have been having words, and uh, we're arguing with them about things. But in space, it has been calm. And with a few minor exceptions, everybody's gotten along well. So I sort of take the viewpoint that if you know you do something like this in space and it works this well, maybe doing these things in space can teach us a little bit about how to get along with each other back on Earth. I mean, do, do you see, I'm thinking maybe 10, 15 years into the future, we know the Americans want to go to the moon in the next decade. Are, are there possibilities for more cooperation here? 
There are. And, you know, when I was growing up in the 60s, there was a song, you know, everyone's gone to the moon. Well, if you look at the countries, Israel's gone there, Japan's gone there, Indians, India's gone there, the U.S. has gone there, China's gone there, and so on. More countries and now private companies want to go there. So if anything, the, the, the ability to prevent somebody or compete somebody out of uh, uh, this activity is going to become less and less possible as more and more different parties become involved. Keith Cowan joining me tonight from Washington. Keith, it's always good to talk with you. We appreciate your time and your insights tonight. Thank you. My pleasure.